Welcome back, and I'm here with an overdue review. Most of you will be familiar with the Nerf Rival Fate. I did a review on it a while ago. It is a breech loading. Why didn't that open? There we go. It is normally a breech loading, single shot, load a ball in there, it's primed, fire, has pretty good performance, has been pretty well received, and you know, people think it'll be a decent mod platform. And it looks like it is. I have the parts for the tier one Duel of Fates kit from Franz Foamworks. There were a few people that contributed to this design. Ellie Who Makes, Chaotica Designs, Zero Tech, and Galactic Creations. Let's get into what this is. This is a kit that lets you fire almost anything from your Nerf Rival Fate. Mega, up to five short darts, or even buckshot shells, which will allow you to load in a whole bunch of other types of ammo. So this makes this a pretty universal blaster. There are a few other things available in tier two of the kit. I'll link down below so you can see tier one and tier two. Tier two has an under barrel rail, a holder for Mega XL, a top rail that replaces the built-in sight. It's pretty neat. But what we're gonna be talking about most is tier one, and that's what I have the parts for here today. We have a new barrel and receiver that when we install this, we can take this hot sauce inline clip that holds five darts, and we can actually plug this in here and it seals really well thanks to this o-ring and all of a sudden we have an inline clip blaster i'm going to show you how to install this really quick we'll take a look at the performance and then i'll tell you how you can get one and maybe who should have it actually i'll tell you who should have something like this right now at the start assuming i like this and i'm pretty sure that i will i'll i'll edit it i'll edit this part if i don't this is a great package for nerfers, for modders, for enthusiasts who want a sidearm with a bit more ammo than one. This is also, I think, because it's based on such an inexpensive base blaster, relatively inexpensive, it gets on sale sometimes for under 20 Canadian. But for this base blaster, which looks great, and a pretty inexpensive kit, this can be given as an awesome gift and a great entryway for uh, kids, a teen, parent, adult, a friend, whatever, who wouldn't think it was cool to get a toy as a gift as an adult? Uh, and you know what? People do. People don't really realize that they miss that. But if you give an adult a toy, I almost guarantee you, no matter what age they are, they're going to smile and they're going to have fun with it. And this is not a hard mod and you actually get something pretty unique and pretty cool. So yeah, that's my spiel on who should get this. I, I think this one makes a great gift for other people. Anyway, on to the installation. So we've taken all the screws out. Please note there's a short screw here and short screws along this bottom rail here. Now we should be able to open up this blaster unless I have forgot a screw. Did I not forget a screw? Oh, my dogs are activating. Maybe the kids are here. All right, so I think we're just going to do a pretty straightforward swap of this piece here. And this looks pretty easy. This doesn't come out and return anymore, so we will not need this spring. I will keep this for my spring collection. I will put that over there. That sounds like a fashion collection. Uh, I will keep that for my spring collection and I will just slide this right in here. I probably, oh wow, that's snug. I probably should lubricate this. And I might actually do just a little bit of sanding. These are 3D printed parts. Uh, I did print these in my closet and that looks a little bit tough. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of an edge off right there. I met the Franz Foamworks team at the Grove City HVZ. And since then, uh, they've been kind enough to send me some STLs to some things so I could review. But it can be quite a delay to ship things up to me, especially for review. So sometimes we just share STLs and I print them here. And that's actually a pretty great way for me to get an idea of how one of their products goes together as well. I need to find some lubricant. Ooh, that was way too much. All right. I didn't really want to take this all apart. I figured I could just slot this on.
Oh, well. <laughs> Springs going everywhere. That's all right. This is a catch spring. This is our little sight. Boy, there's not much to that. And here is our part here that we will probably be able to uh, get on a little easier now. You really just want to go a little bit at a time because you want the seal to be good. This is the only bad thing about if I'm printing the parts here is I just don't have the same setup or consistency that is. Well, <laughs> I'm getting a closer look at the internals of this than I had planned. There's that plunger head. It looks like a clip on the end of there. I don't know if we can unscrew this to do easy spring changes or not. I haven't really looked. All right. We have that installed. We just pressed it in. I lubricated it a little bit and then I just rotated it around. This gap on the top here lines up at the top of the blaster. Let's see if we can put things back in. I just see yeah, that would be slanted like that. That fits in just there. That's not too hard. We have our little catch spring. Little catch spring goes on the top of the little nubbin up here on our plunger. We'll put our plunger back in there. My mistake. I was thinking it went like that. It actually goes down like this. Okay. That goes there. That goes in like that. That actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be for a second there. Ugh, catch springs. I This is kind of why... <laughs> times like this are why I'm, I'm kind of a flywheel guy sometimes, I think. All right. All of our parts in there. That actually wasn't too bad as far as modding goes. Uh, make sure our trigger's still in there. Make sure everything's still in there. And hopefully I didn't cover up too much of that with my big head. We're going to slide this back on, clip that into place. Oh, you guys, why mod something once if you can mod it twice? Uh, after, uh, there goes our spring. After all that, I forgot to take out the air restrictor, uh, which meant that my, my hot sauce uh, clip was running up against a little bit of resistance. An air restrictor helps cushion the blow to the plunger head when you dry fire a blaster. Uh, removing it often is kind of an old timey mod uh, and it will often uh, it will often improve performance to do so. I'm going to do the very delicate thing here uh, of hitting this with a screwdriver. There we go. Managed to finally rip this out. And now if you look through here, you have a clear path instead of this little air restrictor thing blocking your airflow. Now that I've done this, let's put it back together one more time. I'm going to go through the process of tucking this in again, just using my fingernail there to put that ring in there. We should have a very, very good seal from that though. In again, let's try this one more time. And this would also explain, <laughs> I kind of really realized something was up when I fired my Mega XL dart and it went about two feet. So firing something that big, it needs that extra airflow. Let's get a couple screws in this and see if it works better. I violated my age old rule of always put in a couple screws and then test it. I was so cocky. I put in every screw, which is a modder's mistake for sure. I like to at least put in the screws around some main structural pieces or anything that's getting kind of a bunch of vibrations. Let's do that Mega XL test again. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What a difference that air restrictor 
taking that out makes. I should, I wish I grabbed a shot before I took that out. It literally went three feet, whereas this sailed very in line with my Meeker XL, I would say. So really cool. And even though <laughs> this actually worked pretty well before, now that I'm able to seat that in further, oh yeah, that's, that's hitting way, way harder. Five round inline clip, shot one. 84. Prime and flick. 83. Prime and flick. 79. 88. 102. That last one will usually be hotter because there's no other darts behind it blocking airflow. Mega XL. 57, not bad. And now this buckshot round loaded with six half darts. You can get these shells that fire Rival and Mega and other things too. <laughs> Pretty cool. So there you have it. If you have a handy guide to remind you to do all the things like removing the air restrictor, that really wasn't a very difficult install. I do tend to make them seem harder. Sorry about that. You learn with me. I'm probably going to use this blaster and more because I can fire those Mega XL when I need them. And we can easily and quickly swap to these hot sauce inline clips. You can have your two of these preloaded so that you are ready to go. They have this O-ring, so they'll have a good seal. There's about an inch or so of brass in the end, and that makes this very, very consistent. Inline clips, if you don't know how they work, I didn't really get into it before. It's tighter up here at the end. A dart is seated in there. The air kind of flows around the looser darts at the back and pops this one out. You give it a flick down and it seats the next dart in the brass. So that when you prime it and fire, it will fire out the next one. Because of that, as you get less darts in the clip, the darts towards the end actually have better performance because there's just less resistance for the air. I did find with this, my seal is good enough that after this first shot, it worked better to prime it and then flick it down. If I was flicking it down, seeding a dart, priming it would actually vacuum the dart back out of the brass. <laughs> Pretty good. These first couple I've found too basically seat themselves. Uh, I didn't have to do a flick or anything. We'll prime this. Yeah, priming it kind of pulled that dart out of the brass. We give it a flick. Now it's in there. Another target. We pull. We flick. Another on target. We pull. We flick our last one into place. And that is five for five. If you have that tier two, you have some options for buckshot to fire those six half darts at once, maybe rival balls, whatever. Would I recommend this kit? Definitely. I've always been a big knockout fan. This grip is more comfy than a knockout grip. This is a pretty good sidearm choice now, especially the fact that you can pop these in and out. These are not permanently installed. This is really cool. Every once in a blue moon, on my first shot, I would fire two at once. Maybe my brass is a little bit too long. I'll probably talk to Franz Foamworks about just some advice on that. Remember, I built this myself here. And as you saw in my little installation guide, I'm not the best. I hope this is helpful. Get yourself a tier one for sure. If you're feeling fancy, get yourself a tier two. And these buckshot rounds work really well with this. There's no ring here because this also works in the double crusher. <laughs> Those darts spread around and just went all around the target. I'll have a bunch of links below. I hope you are tempted by fate. Thanks for watching.